Welcome to Minneapolis, Minnesota, as today we're going to be checking out the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers football stadium, Huntington Bank Stadium. And this 43rd stadium review is brought to you in partnership with Pultab Sports. Based out of Minnesota, they produce a ton of podcasts on Minnesota sports teams, as well as having other content for across the Midwest. Be sure to check them out at PultabSports.com and throw them a follow on all your social media platforms to show them a big thank you for making all these videos possible. The day before, we drove up close to the border from Wisconsin, but the weather ended up turning on us, so the car camping wasn't as dry as we would have hoped, but we did have some pretty cool views with the lightning off in the distance. And thankfully, everything cleared up in the morning, and it was a beautiful day to cross over the St. Croix River into Minnesota to make our way towards the Twin Cities. So we actually parked at the state fairgrounds in St. Paul which is one of the few lots that you can actually buy day of passes to that allow tailgating. So we had our own little tailgating by smashing a quick drink, and it was really funny because everyone was in either their maroon or their yellow since it was a stripe out. We're maroon gang, but I, I don't have a shirt yet. My jersey's at home because it's too damn hot. I would be burning up right now in it actually. It's a wise choice. There were tons of people tailgating for this 11 a.m. start time, but after smashing a quick drink, we hopped on the free shuttle that took us all the way to the game and led off right in front of the stadium. Huntington Bank Stadium originally opened in 2009 as TCF Bank Stadium and was renamed Huntington Bank in 2022. The Gophers had previously played at the Metrodome and it is a good thing that they got out when they did before the roof collapsed in 2010. The Vikings actually played there from 2014 to 2015 while their new stadium, US Bank Stadium, was being built in downtown Minneapolis. And Minnesota United of the MLS also played there from 2017 to 2018 while their new stadium was being built out closer to St. Paul. Even though this is a newer stadium, it really keeps the charm and aesthetic of old school college football stadiums alive. Up until this point, the newest stadium in the Big Ten was opened in 1960 with Indiana, so it really marked a precedent in these newer college football stadiums. Personally, I really love the outer brick facade with the tall columns, as it really evokes a sense of an old school stadium or like a classic retro baseball stadium. The footprint as well with the horseshoe design is a really iconic college football look. And uh, how about this shot that I got in 2021 flying over it? The stadium currently seats just under 51,000 fans, and it was actually built with a potential to expand it to 80,000 if they actually close off that horseshoe design with stands on the west end. And no, it's not time to go in the stadium quite yet because this is college football, baby. Let's enjoy those pre-game festivities. Since we're maroon game, I had to get myself a nice maroon shirt. And I absolutely love this one with the row the boat and the sky you ma slogan on it. And even better, I paid less than 19 bucks for this puppy. That's what I'm talking about. Tailgate parties were happening all around the outside of the stadium, but we had to make our way over to the hockey arena to see the band playing. However, poor design having a band kind of on top of a slope because we can't even see them. But they had a whole university sponsored tailgate with so much going on, and I really love these reversible bucket hats they gave out if you're Maroon Gang or if you're Gold Gang. Love it. The Big Ten Network was also doing their morning show live right here, so we stopped in and checked that out for a little bit. Then we perused the parking lot around, checking out all the different tailgating setups. This entrance here on the west end of the stadium was really cool with the Minnesota Tribal Nations Plaza. However, it would have been even cooler if they had the fountains going. Okay, now we can make our way in the stadium. And before we go in, just make sure you go ahead and hit subscribe. All right, let's head in. Coming into the stadium, initially you're pretty low on that west end concourse. However, it does give you a great open view into the main seating bowl and the game itself. But you gotta go up the steps to head to the main concourse. We've got a single concourse here for both the upper and the lower deck, and you're nice and protected by the upper deck above you. It's a pretty standard stadium design, nothing fancy or flashy, but there are some pretty decent views down to the playing surface from the concourse. During the game, I did some exploring and noticed that that West End concourse was absolutely jam-packed. There's no way you can see down to the actual game from that concourse. So let's talk about some food. First of all, you gotta send this as oofta, but we know what you're here for, the hot dog review. So let's get right into it. Nice dog, bud. Price, seven dollars, one out of five, not good. Yeah, one out of five. I'm seven. Now you want to say two? 
All right, two out of five for price. Presentation, it looks like a good dog and a nice little cardboard thing. I say once again, two. Bun, bun's nice and toasty. I'm gonna say uh, three for the bun. And uh, I think the dog is a two. My dog's a little cold, a little mushy, a little salty. It's a two. So uh, total that up. Uh, nine. Nine divided by two is four and a half out of ten. Not a great dog here at Minnesota. Wow, that was uh, pretty rough. I think it might have been a little bit harsh on the presentation. Because looking back, I think they look pretty good. So I think that should be bumped up to a three. But however, the price, yeah, that's definitely a one. I don't know what my girlfriend's thinking. Seven bucks for a dog in college, not happening. We saw these people munching on this retro popcorn bag. Pretty awesome. And on that West End concourse, I found these cheese curds. I had to try them. But I'm pretty sure they might have clogged a few of my arteries. As they were just beyond rich. Taking a look at the seating of the stadium now, what's really interesting is that unlike most college football stadiums that are completely bleachers, this actually has legit hard back seats from about the 10 yard lines on each side. And I really do love the giant M and the Minnesota spelled out in them. The student section is at the east end and they really filled that up. Unfortunately, the rest of the stadium wasn't as filled up and the stripe out wasn't as good as it was supposed to be. But the students did make a lot of noise which made up for it. But from that upper deck on the east end, you do get a great view looking west to downtown Minneapolis. What I really loved about being able to walk around the stadium was how compact it feels. Even though it does seat around 50,000, it is really intimate and condensed. As the stands are pretty steep and both of the two decks are kind of shorter, so it feels like you're right on top of the action even if you're farther away. However, not sure what can be said about the massive press box on the south side of the stadium. Looking at the atmosphere now of what the experience is like actually being at the game. Like any college game, of course it's got to kick off with the band. For those of you that don't know, I was in band myself all throughout high school and college, and I was actually scrutinizing the Gopher band pretty heavily. Not what I expected from a Big Ten band to be completely honest with you. But I mean, my school was D2 in football, so no room to talk. Go Cats. University of Minnesota, I really did love how engaged the student section was with the band as they'd all do this flag waving thing during one of the songs. In perfect timing, what do you know, Big Al is in the building, let's go. And look at these dudes kick, safe to say we were in a good section. One thing that I really love about going to college games is just diving in head first to the local cultures. You start in the beginning not knowing a single word of the fight song, and by the end of the game of course I'm clapping right along with them. The team intro teeter-totter side to side was definitely a little interesting, but uh, I think they're rowing the boat there, so that makes perfect sense. Today's opponent was the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana. I had to really hold myself back from not cheering for the Raging Cajuns. With a name like that, you deserve some love. Big number 66 prepped everyone for battle and we're ready to go. You hear the students yelling here is Ska Hu Ma, which is essentially a translation from Dakota and Lakota, which basically means victory for Minnesota. It's a very messy translation, but that's kind of how they're interpreting it. And it's actually been the official slogan of the university since 1884. And the football team is the one really leading the charge with that slogan. And after the Gophers got on the board, the mascot Goldie showed off his seven push-ups. Oh and of course the head spin, which I loved. Goldie also had a segue and a slide. The dude was completely tricked out. I was super jealous. Safe to say, I'm a big fan of Goldie now. The Lion King cam was also pretty great as plenty of babies were hoisted high into the sky. But Minnesota really wasn't getting the results 
on the field as they went into halftime down 17-14 after a very back and forth first half. I was excited to see the show from the giant marching band at halftime. This giant blob clump circle drill was actually pretty cool. And they had some alumni out to stand and play. The alumni band had this awesome massive vintage drum. However, they were only pretending to hit it. I'm like, come on, hit it, that's gonna make a great sound. But they wimped out every time. Gotta hate when it's just for show. Coming back to the third quarter now, so for hockey I always have my second period section hop, baseball I call it the mid-inning mixer, I, football it's gotta be I guess the third quarter tango, third quarter travels, I don't know, something like that, but we made our way around the stadium. What I loved about it is that on top of the upper deck, there's actually a walkway there that's pretty wide, so I was able to take that from where we were sitting in the corner all the way around the stadium and had some fantastic views throughout. And look, that's me. I'm glad I randomly got seats in the shade because it is blazing in the sun. Back around to our section, and this lady here in the tie-dye, she was absolutely killing it. Has to be my fan of the game dancing the entire time. She doesn't care if she's Maroon Gang or Gold Gang. She is just here to party. Thankfully in the second half though, the Gophers were able to take the lead and continue to build off of it. And ended up beating the Raging Cajuns 35 to 24. Hey, and what did I tell you? I told you that we'd be singing the fight song at the end. That's what always happens every game. You gotta immerse yourself into the local culture. And that is Huntington Bank Stadium, home of the Minnesota Golden Gophers football program. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I know it's been a while since the last stadium review, but we're not going anywhere. We're back, baby. We got plenty in the hopper. Lots of stadium reviews coming your way soon. And a little bit of a bonus here, on our way back home in Wisconsin, we stopped by this waterfall where we could go behind it. How awesome is that? Thanks for watching. See you soon. Thanks.